Hey everybody, how you doing today? It's been a while since I've done a live stream here on YouTube. My name is Mark Nonokovan. I am an information security and privacy professional. I feel it's uh, my mission, my goal. What I'm trying to accomplish is, is not to have that audio going. Security. Uh, is to have streams that work great. Uh, let me restart that. My name is Martin Anukovan. I am an information security and privacy professional. My goal is to help you understand uh, that security and privacy uh, are do not have to be difficult. Um, but of course they are. So I'm here to help you, uh, you know, walk that bridge. What I wanted to talk to you today in this live uh, stream, what I wanted to talk to you about was Zoom the video conferencing platform. Now, uh, Zoom has taken a lot of hits since the pandemic started and that we all started isolating at home. And I wanted to walk through why that is. I wanted to walk through uh, the realities of that because now that that initial sort of freak out where everyone went like, oh, Zoom, it's the worst. Um, now that that's calmed down, I think people have a much more uh, practical perspective on this. Um, and I'll walk you, walk you through the security and privacy angles of why that is. So let me just share out uh, my screen here. Um, give me a little, there we go. That's the view I want. All right. So there's this great video, and I'm going to put the links in the description after the po after the stream here, um, by um, the uh, Verge, I think this one is, on um, how the rise of Zoom, like why is it so popular, why are you hearing it everywhere? And the long story short is that you're hearing about Zoom all the time because it was a very popular video conferencing platform. It actually um, you know, isn't revolutionary. It does a lot of the stuff that you expect from things like Skype or GoToMeeting or WebEx um, or a bunch of the platforms out there. There's a ton of stuff that does this. You may be using FaceTime, anything and everything. The reason why Zoom is pretty popular is because uh, quite a few corporations have adopted it after the uh, last uh, couple of years um, so that it was just sort of something new, something to talk about, and it made it pretty straightforward to join. They have clients on all your devices, um, on all your PCs, that kind of stuff. So you could jump into a Zoom video conferencing call and it works pretty well. Okay, so that's why it was hearing everywhere. And then as soon as we all got these quarantine and stay at home orders, we needed a way to connect. So businesses said, well, we can ex uh, expand our video conferencing and we can start having virtual meetings and virtual events. Um, and then people have started to explore uh, other things beyond live streaming and things like that. And it was really interesting. So Zoom came into our popular um, opinion uh, or a popular uh, consciousness based on this need, um, sort of right place, right time right? Good enough solution. Um, and, and it hit that sort of mainstream consciousness. It was talked about on all the uh, sort of news channels and news networks. But, and I apologize for this thumbnail. It's atrocious. I need to go back and fix it. Um, Zoom had a long history of having some security challenges. This is a video that uh, I had published in uh, July of 2019, talking about a previous security issue. And actually, this was the impetus for this uh, stream was someone to comment on this and said, great info, but it's out of date, you should really delete this. And I don't believe in deleting the digital trail here, um, but main, mainly updating it. So I'll add a description uh, or add a link to this video in that video. But essentially, they had uh, privacy issues, they had security issues, they had a long history of these problems. And after that initial wave of, hey, you should use Zoom to stay uh, in touch with people, all of this stuff started to come to light again. And people said, wait a minute, there uh, has a pr horrible privacy policy. It did. Uh, there have been changes, but Zoom had a standard Silicon Valley sort of privacy policy. Basically, if you're going to use this for free, we're going to vacuum up your data and use it to sell ads and use it to sell uh, as behavioral profiles to other people who are interested in selling you stuff. Pretty standard also pretty horrible. There's also a number of security issues around like the Mac OS installer. It used some very interesting tricks, not in a malicious way, but they are malicious tricks to get to the point where it could do updates without prompting you all the time. And that was the goal was to have a better user experience. But unfortunately, they made that sacrifice in the name of security. And of course, when you start to really kind of peel back the layers, everybody is really worried and goes, wait a minute, this thing is a steaming pile. You know what? Why are we all jumping on board the Zoom train? Um, Bruce uh, Schneier had a blog post, uh, which was pretty solid. And uh, basically, he analyzed the implications for privacy and security and came up with three big things. It's got a bad, bad, bad privacy practice, which we already covered, bad security practices, and bad default user configurations. Um, now, bad is a matter of perspective. From the security perspective, it's bad. From the user experience perspective, most of these things were pretty good. Privacy policy accepted. So that was sort of the challenge here, is that you had, um, you have, you know, the security community having known about this platform for a long time. Uh, but in the one month in, I think it was February to March, basically over the span of four weeks, Zoom went from 10 million users to 200 
million years or so. A lot more light being shined on these known issues. Tom's Guide has a great article up, and again, I'll uh, I'll post the links in the description here um, that essentially walks through all of these issues over time, and it shows uh, you know a dozen or more privacy and security issues. Some of them we've covered, some of them we haven't. You don't need to go on it, but basically, this was the nitpicky phase. Um, one of the big things here was that uh, I liked this article because it called out the practical side and said, you know what, Zoom's still safe to use in most cases, and um, which is why I haven't made anything um, earlier than this on uh, an updated Zoom topic because I thought, you know, it's best just to let this kind of work itself out a little bit. But I love this uh, quote at the bottom uh, by Kim Zetter, which is Cruncherian view. Zoom will soon be the most secure conferencing platform out there. Yeah, and Kim's right because the more eyes and the more scrutiny that are on a platform, the more they're gonna solve these problems. Because if you think the problems that we see iterated in these uh, and enumerated in these Zoom articles, are unique to Zoom, they're not. And this is why I didn't come out earlier and say, hey, you guys really need to get off the platform because the practical matter of it is that we needed a tool to solve the problem, which was to keep people connected. And Zoom was filling that nicely with an adequate level of security. And that's really the key here, an adequate level of security. So one of the big problems uh, up front early was Zoom bombing, which is basically the practice of where somebody uninvited would come into your meeting rooms. And this highlighted that exchange of usability versus security and privacy. Uh, Zoom meetings by default used to never have passwords. So if you knew the URL or the meeting ID, you could simply join. And of course, being the enterprising uh, people that they are, cyber criminals and uh, miscreants and people who just wanted to, to mess with people, realized very quickly that you could write a script that just iterated through the meeting IDs because they were just numbers. Um, and if you found one that responded, you could then jump in. And there's some pretty horrible things that happened. Um, you can see, uh, you know, uh, there was one, a couple examples where classes were interfered with um, by people spewing out hate and racist stuff, um, which is totally unacceptable um, and not something you want when you're trying to really solve a problem of people keep, uh, keeping people connected. Having somebody from the outside come in and interfere with your meeting is not at all what you're going for. So that was a major issue, and that brought people um, this up into the sort of mainstream audience of like, oh, this is something serious. Um, so much so that former uh, CSO from Facebook, Alex Stamos, who's um, at at uh, Stanford, I think now, he's at one of the high uh, prestigious universities uh, practicing and researching there now. Um, he was invited by Zoom because he was uh, talking to them on Twitter and he was invited by them to uh, be a consultant. Um, and he had uh, really good tweets that kind of kicked this off. And basically you can see in this article one, he said that Zoom's gonna de need to demonstrate more transparency, um, including putting a security face on all these responses. Well, guess who the security face ended up being? But that's a really positive thing because back to Kim's comment earlier was that the more people shining a light on this, the better the security is gonna be and the quicker for Zoom to the point where Zoom CEO came out and said, hey, we've asked Alex to come in and help us but also we are not gonna be building any more features for the time being. We're gonna focus purely on security uh, improvements and privacy improvements to the product, which is a fantastic thing. That's what we as users want. Um, so first thing they did was they removed meeting IDs from the title bar because people, especially politicians, uh, were tweeting out screenshots of saying like, look at how good we are doing. We've moved from a physical event to an online event. Um, here's proof. And unfortunately the proof was a meeting ID, uh, not necessarily with a password uh, or with a very simple password that let people join. So the most famous example of this is Boris Johnson in the UK uh, tweeted out a virtual cabinet meeting with the ID. Not horrific, but just one of those things where you go, oh, come on, you could have just not included that. Um, so Zoom started to remove that. Really simple feature update, but something that was really nice. And we've seen progressive improvements. They've improved their privacy policy. They've updated the way they install software on macOS. So it's a little more cumbersome for us, but it's far more secure. Um, and I noticed this over the weekend, which I was really impressed about, is they added actually a security button for hosts in the meeting. And you can lock the room, you can enable a waiting room, you can share, uh, turn off various features for participants, which is absolutely a strong, strong move. So the point of this was just to recap the Zoom story, but also to give you the perspective from a security practitioner. There's always trade-offs, there's always problems. Uh, early on in this pandemic, in the lockdown, we needed tools that can help us get together and tools that would reduce that uh, overhead, that uh, make a smoother user experience because troubleshooting these tools is a huge burden on IT infrastructure. Everybody was scrambling to get things in place so that companies could continue to operate, schools can continue to teach, um, 
people and friends could continue to communicate. I know here uh, in our neighborhood, we've had uh, neighborhood trivia nights over Zoom. Um, you need these tools for people to stay afloat. And Zoom was not horrible in its security. It made some very common security mistakes where they had traded off in favor of usability uh, at the sacrifice of, of security. Um, and of course they had the standard Silicon Valley privacy policy. The good news, because they went from 10 million to 200 million users, they've taken steps to fix it all and they continue to take those steps. Nothing's perfect. The idea is being transparent about where your flaws are and working to improve them in, a, in an open manner in response to the situation. That's what security is all about. So there's no need to freak out and panic. Um, even that example you saw earlier in this, uh, in this stream where the New York school board had shut down the use of Zoom, everyone freaked out and said, hey, they're overreacting. For the use case they actually weren't because one of the things that school boards need is the assurance that they can uh, protect the students which is why a lot of the time you'll see um, uh, G Suite for Education as ironic as that ends up being uh, and trusting Google uh, they allow all the students to authenticate and lock them down as opposed to being zoom bombed or share links outside of that domain so a school board has a very different threat model and very, very different risk appetite than companies or friends or other groups. So again, security need is never, uh, you know, black or white is never a binary decision. You really need to apply that practical gradient. And Zoom is a great example of where there are issues, but the issues are getting addressed in a reasonable manner, in a quite uh, expedient manner, which is great because there are so many people uh, looking at them now. Let me know what you think. Uh, hit me up in the comments uh, below. Uh, as always, uh, I'm Mark uh, Nunnikov, and I'm gonna be way more active streaming here on YouTube and posting again. Um, like everybody else, everything's been up in the air for me for the last uh, couple months, trying to deal with this situation. Uh, but if you wanna hear more about different security and privacy topics, please let me know in the comments below. Hit me up on social at MarkNCA, um, or as always by email, me at markn.ca. Thanks for tuning in. We'll talk to you soon.